Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Millian. I'm here with Tony Swallow. We're here at the Aesthetics meeting in Tampa, Florida. It's uh, been a fantastic meeting, and Tony was one of the keynote speakers. Tony, thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely, thank you. Well, let's start today with what you talked about today. Uh, okay. This video will talk about sleep apnea. Sure. Okay. Well, essentially, sleep apnea is when basically you're just not getting air into your body. Whenever you go to sleep, then the most common part of this is as we lay back, our jaw falls backwards and our tongue literally falls into our throat. It's as okay. simple as that. Yeah. Now, and, and, you know, I've got to, my mother wears this CPAP, right. and I've got a brother in law who wears a CPAP. So, right. But so this is of interest. There's a lot of people out sure. there. Sure. So come on. It, it's extremely. It's a, it's an extremely common ailment that people have. Now it starts off okay. as snoring, and you start off as an awake snore. You're snoring, but it doesn't bother you. You're awake during the day. It doesn't right. affect you at all. It may affect the person sleeping next to you, but it doesn't yep. bother you. And then as it, your tongue continues to fall backwards and it, it, the throat gets blocked more and more, you become what we call a sleepy snore. Now you're snoring, but well, now you don't get out of bed as well. And you tend to fall asleep during the day. You may even fall asleep behind the wheel, which is really scary. Okay. And if that progresses, if nothing's done, you end up with what's called sleep apnea. Now an apnea event is where you stop breathing for 10 seconds or more. At night. At night. Okay. So in other words, now your throat is completely blocked off. So you're not just getting a little bit of air kind of vibrating on your throat and the tissue and the palate. Now there's no air for okay. 10 okay. seconds or more. Whoa. If that happens, that's called an apnea event. Okay. Zero to five times per hour, we're okay with that. We'll call that normal. Okay. Five to 15 times per hour, that's a mild apnea. All right. 15 to 30, or some, some people say 20, but 15 to 20 to 30 is moderate. Anything over 30 is severe. Now what okay. we know is anything over 20, the body's starting to wear down. You're gonna pay a price for this. Okay. Because as you stop breathing, stop getting air in, your brain still requires the same amount of air, so your heart starts working overtime to try and get that air to go through. This sounds like we have a, a wonderful opportunity to help people. It sounds like where you're going with we it. We have a fantastic yeah. opportunity. Okay, keep, it, and, keep, keep giving me the sure. notes of it now. And, and, it's okay. and it, this is a wonderful way of helping your patients. Now, a CPAP, right. what you were talking about, or a BiPAP, is basically an air pump. There's, it's okay. not complicated. It's a pump. Okay. And so you wear a mask on your face, and this machine pumps air in. It pumps it so hard, it actually blasts its way into Blast your it. gums. Okay. It, it goes right into your lungs, and it just fills them up so you get air. Okay. The problem is these things are very uncomfortable. You've got a, basically yeah. a scuba diving mask on your yeah. face. And if you roll over, the mask comes off. And you get to go to the bathroom, you got to disconnect yourself, put it all back on. It, yes, it works, but it's a very cumbersome appliance. It'd be nice if there was an easier way. Exactly. So what a lot of patients are coming to me for is they want to get off their CPAP. They don't want to wear this. They like the way it makes them feel, sure. but they're not comfortable with the way they have to sleep. Yeah. So they come to see me, see, is there another way? Well, there is. We have an appliance, and there are several on the market that have been around for a long time. The appliance is very simple. All it does is just keep the jaw forward. So we take a bite record where you're in 70% protrusion, about where you would bite through a sandwich. So it's a very comfortable right. position yeah. where we yeah. wanna make sure we don't hurt the jaw joint or anything. Okay. We just take that jaw forward and the appliance is designed so it keeps you in that position. Now you can still open and close okay. and I can titrate it. I can bring you further or bring you back. Okay. And this is what you sleep with at night. And basically it's just keeping your tongue out of your throat. Okay. That lets the air to come in. Okay. And if you have an apnea score of usually 50 below, sometimes 45 and below, this appliance all by itself gives you enough airway to where you do not need the CPAP machine. Wow, okay. So for the vast majority of patients, this works. Are there some patients so, who so can't? So the majority of these people are in that range that, that... That they're in that range and it'll work for them. It'll work beautifully. Okay. Now the only way to know what your true apnea score is, because you have to know will this appliance work or not, the way to know for sure is you need to get a sleep study. So okay. we send our patients to a, a center. And there are a lot of them, but every town has well, them. Sure, every town, every has, town them. has them. Yeah. You have a and sleep it's study. It's more and more common. And it's more and more common. Insurance yeah. pays for it. It's easy to get a study, and okay. a dentist can order them. Uh -huh. The patient goes sleep for a night. They wire them up. They monitor them while they're sleeping, and they'll have a report ready for you the next day. And it's okay. going to tell you 
What is your apnea score? Do you snore? Does it cause a problem? Where do you sleep? Better on your left, your right, your stomach, your back? I mean, it just tells you a okay. whole host of things. Okay. And a dentist cannot diagnose sleep apnea. A sleep physician has to sign off on it. All sleep centers have a physician. That physician's gonna work with you. Okay. So you're not doing this alone. You're gonna have a doctor working with you, a medical doctor who specializes in sleep, and together you monitor this patient and you just help get air into them. You start getting great. them that great night's sleep again. Great. Patients absolutely adore this service. They don't know about it. That's right. a problem, but how great it makes them feel is just fantastic. Now, um, you talked about front door, back door. Right. And, and what we're doing is, open, if, if you're gonna move uh, air through a building, right. you need two doors open, the front right. door and the back door. Correct. To get the air through. Right. And we're dealing with the front door. Right. And then the, the tissue, uh, uh, architecture in the back of the right. throat would be the back door. Uh, correct. And we were able to uh, handle a lot of these people in the front door, but some of them will eventually need some surgery or some correction in that back door to get that open yes. as well. Yes, because what we know is the tissue's going to collapse. That's going to have it's, it's muscle tone. It's a muscle. Right. Right. And as we know, if you don't exercise or work out, you kind of get flabby. It happens. <laughs> so we're talking now. Right. So what will happen is if you don't treat apnea, it will get worse. Okay. So if you get the appliance in early and you get them down below five, the muscles stay tone, or at least okay. for many, many, many years. Yeah. Okay, well, remember I said if it's 50 and below, this appliance works beautifully. Yeah. Well, what about the ones that are 50 to 100? My feeling is anything over 100, that's, that means and that's, 100 that's times. And that's a number on the sleep study, right? It's number on a sleep study. That's 100 okay. times per hour you stop breathing for 10 seconds or more. Wow. So usually if you're over 100, some patients will be. Something's wrong. You're going to need to be on a CPAP and probably still need surgery. Okay. Below 50, this appliance is all you need. Okay. What about the ones 50 to 100? It's kind of half and half. Yeah. Uh, you try it. You start out with you the, start out start with out the with appliance, the... and then you can always progress to the surgery if necessary. Okay. Let, let's be honest, that surgery is not fun, and it is a surgery. And yeah. the, the way the surgery works is you play the scar tissue. The ENT will go in and remove tissue, and when it heals, it's going to create scar tissue, which shrinks up. Okay. And when it shrinks up, it lifts the tissue out of the way. Okay. For a week, yeah, you're on pain relievers and, you know, eating ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fun. Yeah. So why start with that? Right. You just start with the appliance, see what you get. Tony, thank you so much. You're welcome. Absolutely, right. it was fun.